Welcome back to Hashtag That. I'm Josh Cook. And I'm Erin Christensen. From Joker to Walking Dead, we're back with the latest entertainment news updates. All that and more from Hand in Hollywood. We are your source for Quinnipiac's entertainment news. <music> From him into Hollywood, we are your source for Quinnipiac's entertainment news. Kick streamer Jack Doherty has been banned from Kick for endangerment while he, while he live streamed him driving at high speeds on the highway, which ultimately led to a bad car crash. In a clip posted to X, the streamer was carried throughout, through the window of his McLaren from other drivers seeing what happened jumping into action. His cameraman Michael was, was trapped in the car also with cuts on his head and was shown on camera bleeding from the top of his head. Both have survived the crash with just sustaining mild injuries. Longer versions of the clip surfaced on X showing that the streamer was driving in wet conditions speeding and checking his phone while trying to cut off another car. He was heavily scrutinized for his actions of showing reckless driving in front of fans who are kids and for not helping getting his friend out of the car. A TikTok creator known as Mr. Prada, Taryn Thomas, has been charged with second degree murder and obstruction of justice. The 20-year-old, who has nearly 4 million followers, was arrested in Dallas after a warrant was issued in connection with the death of 69-year-old therapist William Nicholas Abraham. Authorities found Abraham's body along a highway in Louisiana, with blunt force trauma cited as the cause of death. Investigators say Thomas was seen driving Abraham's stolen vehicle and they uncovered evidence of a violent struggle at his apartment. Reports indicate a significant amount of blood was found, along with weapons. Social media is buzzing with speculation about the nature of the relationship between Thomas and Abraham, but police have confirmed there's no evidence to suggest that he was a client of Abraham. Thomas is currently being held in Dallas without bond, awaiting extradition to Louisiana as the investigation continues. Joker, full a ado, the sequel to 2019's Joker came out this weekend and crashed at the box office. So what happened? Well, to start, the musical element to the movie didn't sit well with viewers who came to see a continuation of Arthur's story. What they felt they got was a story with musical breaks within it, breaking the pacing and drive of the movie. Filet Adu grows $40 million in its first week, and which couldn't compete with its first film, which grows $96.2 million in its first weekend. More on this movie later, as we share with you some thoughts about this seemingly controversial movie. Ariana Grande is speaking out about the public reaction to her relationship with Wicked co-star Ethan Slater. In a recent interview with Vanity Fair, the singer expressed disappointment over how their romance has been perceived. She stated, quote, The most disappointing part was to see so many people believe the worst version of it, end quote. Grande, who plays Glinda in the upcoming musical film, emphasized Slater's character, noting, quote, no one on this earth tries harder or spreads themselves thinner to be there for the people that he loves and cares about, end quote. The couple reportedly began dating while filming Wicked, which attracted attention as they were both previously married. Grande confirmed her relationship with Slater in July 2023, shortly after announcing her separation from Dalton Gomez. As they navigate their relationship in the spotlight, Grande hopes for understanding and kindness from fans and the public. Now don't go anywhere just yet, as we got so much more to cover after this short commercial break. We are taught, you don't talk about your problems with nobody because you could get in trouble. And I've been through a lot. Anxiety, depression, sexual assault. When I decided to get help, my life changed. And the mental health box, that was one of the big tools. Accepting help means that we're allowing somebody to bless our life. It's freeing. We got stronger together. Love your mind. I debate all day. It's what I do. But there are some things that are undebatable, like your mental health. I was in a dark place when my brother passed away in a car accident. I was depressed in ways I never imagined. I reached out, and my sisters came. My pastor, my therapist, they helped me get through it. I found that the more I spoke up, the healthier my mind became. When you love your mind, you can go so much further. Find mental health resources at loveyourmindtoday.org.
Here with Plugged In to give us all the latest video game news is Kevin Brennan. Thanks guys. There's so much happening in the realm of gaming, I'm not going to waste any more time and dive into things. Fans of The Sims are very upset with the new ad for the, expen for the expansion pack. However, they're not upset with the content, but rather how they are presenting via pop-up ads. These pop-up ads are for the new Halloween pack, including ghostly, ghostly Sims and their supernatural powers. However, they are still upset on how EA has gone about announcing things. One fan has stated, it's not just an annoyance, but it's redundant. Some, or the Sims have faced backlash for aggressive ads in February for this kind of advertisement, interfering which led to the DLC store. Along with that, Sonic Team executive producer Takashi Muzuka commented on the new PS5 Pro, stating that their developers will continue to focus on previous generation of consoles. With the praise of the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, the Sonic franchise has released titles on, the more, on more powerful systems. Some franchises have moved to the newer hardwares, with games such as Tekken 8, Monster Hunter, and Dragon Ball Sparkling Zero. However, the Xbox One, PS4, and the Nintendo Switch are still going strong on the, to this day, despite being replaced. Even though the PS5 Pro has faced controversy, the Sonic Team developers still supported the system, stating that they want as many people as possible to play the Sonic series. And to conclude, the PS5 games are reportedly enhancing visuals to appeal to their games from the PS4. Several games are set to receive big upgrades on the PS5 Pro. So far, over 60 games are getting upgrades, such as Alan Wake 2, Madden 25, and more. These games will receive features such as improved ray tracing performance and, ray and frame rates. The PS5 Pro will be backwards compatible with the PS4 and will receive a boost from frame rates to the PS4 games. Toshimasha Toshi Ekoiki stated that, they, that there will be an image quality boost and a setting on the PS5 Pro that enables the PS5 to be toggled from on or off. These effects, these features will only affect PS4 games and can provide an aesthetic boost to even the best looking PS4 games. That's it for this week's Plugged In. Back to the desk. As previously mentioned, Joker Fole Adu just released this weekend, five years after the original to a pretty underwhelming reception. Patrick Cerbero is here to give a more in-depth analysis on what went wrong. What's up, Hashtag? I'm Patrick, and this week I'm reviewing the new movie Joker Fully Adieu, sequel to the 2019 Joker movie. The 2019 Joker movie was one that is really beloved to me, and I was really excited to go and see the sequel. But that being said, it was a little underwhelming, um, so before we get into what I didn't like about the movie, let's go over what the movie did well. One thing I really liked about the original movie was the score, and I'm pleased to say that they did an outstanding job with the music in this movie as well. The, uh, reusing themes from the original movie as well as implementing the new musical sequences. The music was very enjoyable to listen to and it really uh, brought the movie together in areas where it was lacking. Joaquin Phoenix again does an outstanding job as Arthur Fleck. Something that I think this film did much better than the original was the cinematography. I really found myself uh, in awe at a lot of the shots throughout the movie and it was really a treat to see. With that being said, there wasn't much that I really liked about this movie. So let's get into what we didn't like. The main issue with the sequel to Joker is it really felt like it just didn't need to be made. I think a lot of the intrigue with the original movie was all the different interpretations that you could have made from the ending. And I feel like it was in a very good spot where the story was kind of set and you didn't really need to explore it any further. I think what a lot of people weren't happy with after the first movie was the lack of seeing Arthur as the Joker. Um, but after he slips into this character, I think a lot of people were expecting to see a lot more of the Joker in the second movie, which unfortunately we really didn't get as the Joker only sort of shows himself through fantasy sequences that play out in Arthur's head. This movie also takes a different approach and is a musical. They really just didn't do a great job with it. In the first movie, the music was used to express Arthur's emotions when he couldn't use his words. But in this movie, we really just see the music instead of words. And 
It really takes away from a lot of potential dialogue that we could have gotten and fleshing out his character. And it just felt like it was too frequent and just didn't really make sense in the plot. Lady Gaga plays Harley Quinn in this movie, which she did a great job with, given the script that they had. With that being said, it felt like her character got sort of sidelined and it felt like she was only really there just to sing. Lady Gaga is a great actress and I would have really liked to see more of her acting ability in the movie rather than just being there to sing in all the scenes that she was in. A really controversial part of this movie was the ending. Um, the action really ramps up in the last 10 minutes, which is okay if it made sense, which it didn't. This action has to do with uh, the Joker followers, which were a big part of the first movie and played a big part into Arthur's character as he finds that he's finally getting validation from people. In this movie, the Joker followers just sort of spawn in, like out of nowhere, and it doesn't really make sense for what was happening in the story. Lastly, the ending was just not good. I'm really not going to get into it. I'm not really going to spoil it. It was just not a good ending. It didn't make sense and it came out of nowhere. With that being said, Joker Folia Do is going to get four hashtags from me. That's all the time we have for this week. I'm Patrick Sorbero. I'll see you all soon. Back to you guys at the desk. Here with Let's Get Real is Zoe Mezzo. Thanks guys. I'm going over everything reality TV, so let's jump right into it. Famed couple Gina Kirschneider and Travis Mullen have been giving Real Housewives fans a sneak peek into the drama between Travis and his ex-wife, Megan Mullen, on whom he had filed multiple restraining or orders over the past seven years. It's safe to say it's been an emotional roller coaster for the Mullins, but with two families mixed together, aka six kids in total, plus a resentful ex-wife, it's definitely proven to be a bit of a challenge. But do we know the whole story of what really went down in Orange County? According to recent court documents, after finding her infringing upon restraining orders on multiple offenses, Travis claimed, quote, Megan was arrested for violating a criminal protective order protecting me from her. He has also, she has also threatened me and my family. Her behavior has created a dangerous environment for our children and me, end quote. The couple, trying their best to deal with all this tension, made the decision to live separately, although assuring fans that they were still together. So although you wouldn't know it from the show, it turns out there was a lot going on behind the scenes, mostly in court. Here's hoping it all comes to a resolution soon. The long-awaited fan favorite show, Love is Blind, returned to Netflix October 2nd, and there's a lot to be excited about. They are finally bringing back the experiment fans know and love, where all the contestants get to know each other without ever meeting face-to-face. -face. Netflix has scheduled the release of 12 episodes, all coming out over the span of the next four weeks but the finale is set for Wednesday, October 23rd. With a whole new cast, this time based in Washington, D.C., the fans couldn't wait to see what this new batch of contestants will bring, and they were not disappointed. According to Netflix, quote, this season's pod, pod squad includes a handful of military veterans, multiple scientists, a lawyer, a journalist, and for the first time ever, two sisters who will enter the experiment together, end quote. The show is making its comeback with season seven, making for among some of the fastest TV turnarounds after only making its premiere first back in February of 2020. We'll just have to wait and see what the show brings us next. The Kansas City Chiefs Wives and Girlfriends, or WAGs, have been announced to have a show in the works, and it appears as though Taylor Swift and Brittany Mahomes will not be a part of it after all. The show, uh, announced by Bravo on Friday, it's still very early in development, however, the project is apparently already in the filming process. After not only winning the Super Bowl, but also having Miss Swift on their side, the Chiefs have definitely been getting their fair share of attention lately. However, a source told Page Six, quote, Taylor is very protective of what little private life she has left, end quote. Although the cast has not been officially determined, there are a lot of players, wives, and girlfriends that I know people would love to see. The show sounds like it would definitely spark a lot of interest, but who knows? Will we be seeing these football wives and girlfriends on our screens in the future? Only time will tell. That's it for this week's Let's Get Real. We will be back after this commercial break. Have you ever helped a fellow veteran? 
Yes. I do my best reaching out to my brothers and sisters in arms. Have you ever asked for help yourself? Most of us, we're not going to admit that we need to help. You don't have someone to kind of help you guide those thoughts. It can be really bad. It's just a beautiful space when someone can trust you and say, listen, I need help. Our stories. The warmth of our laugh. Or our family's secret sauce. We all bring something different to the table. So make some space. The power of connection is waiting right outside your comfort zone. Learn how you can help strengthen your community at belongingbeginswithus.org slash team up. The Walking Dead is back at it again with dragging out the story with Daryl Dixon's season two, The Book of Carol. Let's check in with Michael Katz Flynn to see if, it's, if this is a worthy entry. Hey, hashtag, it's Michael. The Walking Dead is back continuing its Daryl Dixon spinoff, but this time with the inclusion of fan favorite Carol Peltier and an additional title, The Book of Carol. The spinoff initially was supposed to be about Daryl and Carol from the get-go, but had to pivot due to actress Melissa McBride backing out since she couldn't commit to relocating to Europe for an extended period of time. While it was unknown what changed her mind, she's now back to portray Carol again for the spinoff. The opening scene of the premiere picks up immediately out of the end of season one with Daryl missing his boat home. He regroups with the characters we met in season one and makes a new deal to stay longer and get another way home. We then cut back to Carol as she is looking for clues on where Daryl may be and takes the focus of the episode. Earlier this year in The Ones Who Lived, which was centered around Rick and Michonne, Fans were surprised to see the two reunite at the end of the first episode instead of them crossing paths towards the middle or end of the series. It seems as though this will not be the case as we cut back and forth between Daryl and Carol's story, but with Carol as more the forefront this time around as she is on a mission to find her best friend. One major standout from the episode was the first acknowledgement in a long time of The Walking Dead's saddest death of season two, Sophia Peltier, the daughter of Carol. When Carol is looking for a way to France, she befriends a local who offers her shelter and when he opens up his barn, it brings back the memories of the walkers coming out of the barn on Herschel's farm and being left in distraught at the sight of her daughter walking out as a walker. While we've had plenty of hallucinations and flashbacks throughout the franchise, this is the first time where we see a fully reshot version of a scene higher quality to match the current quality of the series. While there aren't any other characters present in the shot of the remake, it still perfectly recaptures the essence that fans went through watching the scene for the first time. While The Walking Dead has changed a lot in the 14 years it's been around, it's nice to see them still acknowledge important events from the early days to show they haven't fully forgotten their roots. It will be interesting to see how the direction of the season will follow, especially with the confirmation of seasons 3 and 4 of the series being in development. While fans are begging for the epic reunion of Daryl Dixon and Rick Grimes, it seems unlikely it will come out anytime soon, with the franchise continuously ha having no end in sight and Norman Reedus coming out to say that he wants to continue playing the character of Daryl for another six or seven years. One glimmer of hope of seeing this reunion happen at some point is the confirmation of season three taking place in Spain, which fans of the comics know as where Rick Grimes' brother Jeffrey Grimes was when the Walker outbreak started. While Jeffrey has never been mentioned once in this TV series, very early on, there was a webisode titled Cold Storage, where a man finds a storage unit with a photo book with pictures of Rick Laurie and Carl Grimes. While he is unnamed, he shares a striking resemblance to Rick and the way he looks through the photos of the family seems as if he was reminiscing and had a deep connection with them. While maybe this a stretch, the spin-offs have shown that despite the repetitiveness of the later seasons, The Walking Dead is still able to find ways to keep the series fresh and expand upon the universe, so anything is possible. Whether or not Jeffrey Grimes will come to the TV universe or not, we will have to wait and see what happens in season three when they go to Spain. But for now, the first two episodes of season two have really set the groundwork for an interesting narrative this season, and I am excited to see what else they have in store. That's all for me. Now back to you guys at the desk. Sound Exchange, and here to fill us in on all the latest updates, joining us at the desk is Joe Flynn. Thanks, guys. Lots of exciting things have happened in the music industry that we can't wait to get into. Pop star Olivia Rodrigo announced that her recent Guts World Tour will have a concert movie released on Netflix. The film titled Olivia Rodrigo Guts Tour will debut on October 29th exclusively to Netflix. The format of streaming concerts has risen in popularity with recent films like Taylor Swift's Eras Tour and Kendrick Lamar's The Big Steppers Tour. These films have given fans the opportunity to still see live performances without having to deal with the significant expense of concert tickets. My question to you, is live streaming concerts the future of seeing artists live or will it be a fad that slowly goes away? I don't think anything can replace seeing a live concert. I mean, while it is great to have the movie to look back on or to watch if you can't go to the show, 
nothing takes away the energy of being in a live arena and hearing your favorite artists perform your real your favorite songs in real time. Right. Yeah. I agree, but like sometimes, like you know, because not everybody can go to concerts and all that. So I know that watching it like on like a phone, like uh, Kendrick's Pop Out concert, for example, I watched that on my phone because I wasn't there and I seen it live through Amazon and it hit just the same. But nah, definitely seeing it in person is always better. I think the main thing that is going to happen with this, I think it's going to stay around mainly because of the price of concert tickets has gone up, especially with like the Eras tour. Mm. I think prices for tickets have gone up significantly and it, this just gives more opportunity for people to see their favorite artists. Moving on, hip hop artists ASAP Rocky and The Weeknd have yet to release albums they have announced from over a month ago. In August, ASAP Rocky announced his album, Don't Be Dumb, which was originally slated to release at the end of the month. However, the project has been delayed indefinitely. The Weeknd is having a similar situation with his album, Hurry Up Tomorrow, which was announced in early September. Because of the delay, fans have had mixed feelings of excitement and impatience. My question for you is, do you think the delays build up more hype for the release, or do you think this album makes the wait for the album less worth the while? I think that it depends on how long that album release is. Because like, these rollouts are fine, but Sometimes, like, they take too long. Like, we was waiting on this ASAP album for how long now, and now it's being delayed again. Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of ridiculous, you know? So that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I would completely agree. I definitely don't think it adds to the hype in any way. Um, as long as, you know, they're strategic and marking it again when it is going to release, I think it will be okay, but definitely not the best. Yeah. Especially with an artist like ASAP Rocky, his last album, Testing, was released in 2018. Yes. And my roommate is a really big fan of ASAP Rocky, and he's been really impatient because he announced his um, new album originally in June, and it was supposed to release at the end, end of August, and now it's unknown at this point. So it's, it's a little ridiculous that it's taking this long. Moving on, Charlie XCS has been teasing guest artists for her new album, Brat, and it's completely different, but also still Brat. The album is a remix of her hit album, Brat, which released earlier in June. The guest appearances have been teased on billboards that have appeared throughout the world. Some of the confirmed appearances include Ariana Grande, The 1975, Julian Casablancas, and Caroline Polachek. My question is, will these billboards make a difference for exposure of the album, or is the popularity of Brat enough to bring in many streams? I think that the album itself is popular enough to bring in a bunch of streams, especially because this was Brat Summer, so everybody is clearly aware of this album, and the new artists only bring more excitement, and Ariana Grande, for example, I know people are gonna be excited to hear this one. I've already seen people talk about it on social media, so I don't think there will be any trouble with getting new listeners. So many people have been talking about her for a long time now. Since the beginning of the summer up until now, you can't get enough of Brad. I'm always hearing about it, <laughs> so I think that it should be like good on on its own. The fact that I had to explain to my parents what Brad Summer was speaks about how popular the album was, so it's, <laughs> it's really exciting to see a new version come out, and I really cannot wait for it to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, it truly has been a pleasure joining you guys today. That's all the time we have for Sound Exchange. I may be signing off, but you'll still have more of these two after this short commercial break. Everyone has a ritual, that small thing to keep us focused. A habit we never skip, to clear our minds and elevate our performance. But what do you do to keep your head in the game? to drown out the self-doubt and support your mental health. Because being your best isn't just about taking care of your body. It's about taking care of your mental health. Discover the resources that you need to keep your mind focused and your mental health a priority. Even the mighty might not see it coming. It's pre-diabetes, and it captures one in three adults. But you can escape. Take the one-minute pre-diabetes risk test to know where you stand and prevent or delay type 2 diabetes. Be your own hero on smartphones everywhere at doihaveprediabetes.org. I don't remember how it started. Talk to that. Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! 
You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. This week, Aaron and I are playing a game of Match the Track. Let's get started. All right, let's get into it. Um, all the Stars with SZA oh. was on B, the Black Panther album. Yeah, I love that album. Ah, it was so good. <laughs> oh and my I love gosh. That movie. Yep. That's yep. my favorite movie. I'm not even going to lie. It is your favorite film? I love that movie. I've seen it like eight times. And the soundtrack just made it even that much better. Yeah, now it's the best song on the album. Mm -hmm. Easily, easily. Acquainted, The Weeknd. Uh, <laughs> that popped up very quickly. Yeah, I'm not But I think I'm going to go with After Hours. I think I'm wrong. I'm probably going to go C. Actually, no, no, no. I'm going to go B. I'm going to go B. I'm going to go Star Boy. Oh, oh. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I never listened to that one. I honestly, I love The Weeknd so much, but I'm not super familiar with his album titles, so yeah. I kind of blanked on that one, but I love that song, so. No, that song is. Should have known that. Every day, okay. Oh, my brothers will be so disappointed if I get this wrong. <laughs> I was about to say, we just talked about ASAP earlier, too. Can we show the options one more time, please? I don't want to let my family down. Long live ASAP, is it? Yeah, I'm gonna go with long. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go with long live ASAP. I long. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not familiar with his albums either. Even though he does need to drop. Billy Eilish. Your power. Oh, don't worry. Yeah, I will I'm take this say, one. This is all you. <laughs> this is from Happier Than Ever. Oh, okay, okay. I absolutely love Billy Eilish. Even though Happier Than Ever honestly wasn't my favorite album, and I didn't listen to it that much. She's still my favorite, and she definitely came back hard with Hit Me Hard and Soft. Like, that album is incredible, and I am dying to see her live. But you know how those ticket prices are. I might have to tap in. What's your okay, name? Okay, I am not familiar with that song, so oh, do you want to take got, this? I might have got you on this one. I, okay, I got okay, you on this on. one. What's your name? I'm going to go with Call Me If You Get Lost. Yeah, yes, like, yes, yes. I love this album by Tyler Creator. He's like top five rapper, I think, currently in like the modern day of rap. You know, he might be in the big three. I'm not gonna lie. You know, I don't know if that. I don't know if that's a crazy take. <laughs> Tyler the Creator, he's out there. His no, catalog, awesome. his catalog is, is tough. No doubt. Oh, you know I'm no good. This might be you again. Okay, <laughs> so be. I think it's from Back to Black, but I also could be completely wrong about this. I'm going wherever she goes. Yeah, okay, that's what I... There you go. If, you know, if you know Amy Winehouse, then that was kind of pretty obvious, but I guess you're not. I know she was on a Nas song. Oh, <laughs> I, know, I know she was on a song with Nas, that's all I know. Oh, I didn't even know that, mm -hmm. okay. So I got a really... What track have you had on repeat this week? Okay, so I've been going back to the song Dirty Work. It's just a classic. When I'm driving in the car and I'm feeling angsty and moody, just blasting that music, oh. It, nothing hits. Nothing no, that hits song definitely be bumping in the car. That song definitely be bumping in the car. I think a song I got playing right now that's that's been in rotation is Blow for Blow with uh, T Grizzly and J Cole. That song. I don't know it. You don't know it. I'm not gonna lie. You have to tap in. Okay. Okay. That song just came out and. How you know, recently? Like last weekend, I think. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And J Cole, he's been on a feature run because you know Grippy. You know they was all saying they was all hating on J Cole, saying he's trash and everything. <gasps> You know, know what I'm saying? But this. now he's back. He went on a feature on with uh, Daylight. He went on a feature on with T Grizzly. And it was one more. I can't remember the, the other one. But yes. It's okay, fine. so he's making a comeback. Yes. I love this. And T Grizzly. T Grizzly, he's great too. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. They definitely got a hit on that one. Anything else that you're listening to? Just to end it off in one more song? I think, I think, I think that's the biggest one right yeah, there. Yeah, no. The biggest one. All right, then we'll end, we'll end on that. That's all the time we have this week on Hashtag That. Make sure to follow us on our social media accounts to stay up to date. I'm Erin Christensen. And I'm Josh Cook from the Producers Talent and everyone working hard behind the scenes. Thank you for watching Hashtag That, and we will see you again next week.